Well, hello, YouTubers. So, you want to get into uh, processing e-waste to recover gold. I don't blame you. Who doesn't like free gold? We're almost free gold. So, where to start? I mean, that, that was the question I had. I had a lot of e-waste laying around, and I heard I could get gold out of it, but I didn't know where to start back then a couple years ago when I first got started. So I'm going to make you a how-to video on how to get started. I'm going to start with what I like to call the low-hanging fruit of uh, e-waste gold recovery. Gold fingers. You know, computer expansion cards and um, lots of other electronic equipment have gold fingers on them. So if you can start out with gold fingers, that's a, that's a good place to start because um, you don't need a whole lot of fancy equipment to get going. The chemicals for um, you know getting the fingers off or getting the gold off of the cards are pretty mild and easy to come by. So it's it's a good place to start is with gold fingers. So lots of stuff has gold fingers. Not only expansion cards for computers. There's the gold fingers down there, and this is an older expansion board. It has gold fingers over there. Um, but you know riser boards have gold fingers. Um, this is a board from an old floppy drive from way back in the day, and it has gold fingers on it. Um, ram sticks have gold fingers on them. Yep. Now, there's not much gold in these, but if you got a whole load of them, a whole big pile of them, it starts to add up. If you can get them cheap, you know. And uh, laptop ram sticks, too, have uh, gold fingers on them. And other things. Uh, this is a this is a radio module, you know, for a Bluetooth or or Wi-Fi from a laptop too. It's got gold fingers and it's got gold gold pads on the board there. I'll need to recover those too. But that may be a different video. So, you know, you don't need a whole lot of, of equipment to do this. Like I said, there's there's lots of ways to get the fingers off. Um, if you've got big strong nippers garden shears or metal shears you can just cut them off you know big heavy-duty scissor type things you can just slice them right off the the fiberglass boards are pretty thin and not that strong and and they'll cut off pretty easy another way is people will uh, take a pair of pliers and just bend them back and forth until the fingers break off so that's that's a way to go too um, me I've got a I've got a bandsaw so I'm gonna use bandsaw to uh, to recover the fingers and I'll show you how I do it. Um, and there's, there's, you know, and once you take the fingers off stuff, don't throw it away. There's more gold there. Like, uh, you know, I'll take the fingers off this uh, ram stick, but the ram chips themselves have gold in them. So I'm not going to throw these away. I'm going to stockpile them. But, you know, recovering gold from the ram chips, that's another video because it's a little more complicated. Um, you know, these cards over here. Yeah, the IC chips have gold in them, so I'm not going to throw that away. And uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, here's a little modem. So it's got it's got fingers and it's got IC chips on it, both of which have gold. But it also has uh, gold-coated connectors on the end. But of course, getting gold out of those, that's another video too, because that's complicated. And even after I've recovered all the gold I can from these things, I'm not necessarily going to throw them away because my scrapyard will still give me a dollar a pound for the uh, the circuit boards. So, you know, I can recover as much gold as I can from them every which way I can, and then I'll take the pile over the scrapyard and make even more money off of them. So, you know, the gold, like, the, the gold fingers, like I said, are the low-hanging fruit, but there's a lot more fruit to be gotten off of them. It just takes a little more time, effort, work, and, uh, and then, of course, you've still got the scrap value of the boards themselves in the end. So there's there's a lot of money to be had in e-waste if you process it right. So I'll give you a, a little uh, little idea how I get gold out of fingers. Well, I'll go through this uh, box here and uh, cut all the fingers off of this stuff and pile it up. And then I'll show you how I process it. Now, we're going to need a little bit of protective equipment for doing this. And uh, at different stages in the game, you're going to need different equipment. Right now, we're just doing mechanical processing. Later, we're going to be doing chemical processing with some fairly nasty but easy to obtain chemicals. So we'll need different equipment for that. 
But for what we're going to do right now, um, you need a dust mask, at least something like this, if not a full respirator if you've got one, and some gloves. The fiberglass dust can be very, very irritating, if not downright toxic, if you breathe it. And cutting these on the bandsaw is going to make a lot of fiberglass dust. So I'll be wearing that. You also need to have some eye protection. I'll have my eye protection on. And then I'll show you um, how I get the fingers off different things here. Okay, so in general, when you're doing this, you want to get as close to the end of the fingers as you can. You don't want a lot of other stuff in with your fingers. You want what are called close cut fingers. Because if you cut too far up, you'll get a lot of other stuff. A lot of little resistors, a lot of little capacitors. There's a lot of tinned uh, feed through holes here and stuff. Tin is bad. So you want to minimize the amount of tin you get in with your stuff. So I'm going to cut them as close as I can and just, just leave the fingers. So I'm going to do that with uh, with a lot of this stuff. Just going to cut it off as close as I can, just get the fingers, or try to, and leave everything else. Okay, I'm all geared up. I got my gloves on, I got my eye protection on, and I got my mask on, which is why I sound even funnier than usual. So we're going to get started. You may not be able to hear me over the sound of the bandsaw. We'll see. So I'm going to start with this board and just take the fingers off. So that was quick and easy, and I've got some close cut fingers here. And then here's the, uh, here's the floppy drive board. So I cut that up to where it looked like the end of the gold was up under the conformal coating. And here's a ram stick. Alright, see how close I cut those fingers? Right to the edge of them because there's a whole line of little chip resistors and capacitors and stuff and there's a lot of solder right there and I don't want that contaminating my fingers. And then here's a, here's a big old board. So I'm going to cut the fingers off of it. And... Again, close cut. It's ugly, but hey, I got all the gold and left all the other stuff behind. And here's a riser board. A lot of PCs have riser boards in them, especially the small form factor ones. So, uh, riser board, got some nice fingers on it, harvest those. Okay, here's a, here's a slightly more modern uh, computer uh, ex um, expansion card. Now this, is, this has got gold fingers on it, and it's got lots of gold connectors up here. So again, I won't be throwing this out. It's got IC chips on it that have gold in it. It's got uh, gold connectors. You can see how much gold there is in those connectors. My goodness. So yeah, definitely we'll save this for depopulating and harvesting the other stuff. But for now, I'm just going to get the fingers off. You know, I've got a lot of stuff here. I'll just uh, go through it. I won't make you watch the whole process. I'll just show you the finished pile. But so here they all are on the scale. 8.4 ounces or 240 grams. Going to process these and see how much gold we get out of them. Not going to get rich. I don't want to crush your expectations, but you never get as much gold as you think you will. Most of that weight, of course, is the fiberglass substrate. And um, the, the gold plating is very thin, and it's plated on top of copper, nickel, other metals. And of course, it's not a pure gold alloy either. So by the time we get all the gold extracted and purified down to 24 karat pure gold, it's not going to be that much of it. But uh, we should get a respectable amount from 8.4 ounces or 240 grams of close-cut fingers. 
Okay, so we're ready to go. We've got our uh, close cut fingers here. And what I want to do is dissolve the metal that the gold is plated onto. The underlying metal. Copper, nickel, whatever. Dissolve that away. And to do that we're going to use what's called um, acid peroxide solution or better known as AP solution. And it's just a 50-50 mix of muriatic acid or, you know, uh, hydrochloric acid, same thing, and hydrogen peroxide. I got a couple of bottles of drugstore hydrogen peroxide here from a couple of different drugstores, it looks like. Uh, this stuff is really cheap. I mean, this is like 89 cents a bottle. And, uh, you know, uh, a gallon of muriatic acid is not very expensive at all. Just a few bucks. So, this is all you need, and you know, you don't need a lot of it. I'm going to put the, uh, I'm going to put the fingers in this jug back here, this plastic jug, and I'm going to cover it just to the, just so that the, the fingers are covered with a 50-50 mix of this stuff. I'll fill it halfway up with the acid, and then the rest of the way up with the hydrogen peroxide, and that should do it. Now, I'm also going to insert a, um, aquarium bubbler in there on the bottom and you could do this without an aquarium bubbler what the bubbler does is it keeps the liquid circulating and adds extra oxygen to the liquid and what you'll find is it'll work a lot quicker if you keep it circulating and add extra oxygen I did my first few runs without the aquarium bubbler you can do it without um, it'll take longer and you'll find dead spots in there where all of the acid gets used up and because there's no circulation it doesn't get replenished and uh, you'll come you'll get spots on your on your fingers where the gold doesn't come off so you can do it without you just may have to give it a lot longer and maybe several treatments now it helps if you you know periodically agitate it mechanically you know with your hands if you don't have a bubbler in there so ag agitation does help now I'm gonna have to put on some gloves and some eye protection before I pour the acid. You gotta, you gotta be a little bit respectful of this stuff. It will burn you. So, and you certainly don't want it in your eyes. Now I'm gonna do it in my fume hood because I have a fume hood. Now I know most of you watching this don't have a fume hood. Well, I built my own fume hood and I have a series of videos on how I did it. So you can check that out if you want to do a fume hood. You don't have to do this in a fume hood. You can do it outdoors or somewhere where there's a lot of fresh air. But certainly do not do it indoors. Don't do it where kids can get at it. Don't do it where pets can knock it over. Um, it, it really has to be done outdoors where there's nobody around. And it's going to have to go for about a week. With my bubbler, at least a week. Now, the, the warmer it is, the quicker it'll work. Um, we're almost into December here in Florida. It's starting to cool off, especially at night. So this may take two weeks. We'll see. It'll take a little while. Um, your mileage will vary depending on the temperature, whether or not you're using a bubbler, that sort of thing. Uh, if you can put it out in the sun so that it gets the sun during the day and warms up, that will help. Uh, the warmer it is, the faster it will work. Anyway, I'm going to get started. I'm going to gear up with you know, gloves and eye protection and... Um, I'm going to put everything in the in the jug and we'll get started. Okay, I've got the fingers in the jug. Uh, I've got the, the hose for the bubbler down at the bottom underneath so that the bubbles will come up through the fingers and keep things stirred up. I didn't pack the fingers in there really tight. They're kind of just loosely dropped in there. I want some space between them so I don't get dead spots. And. Uh, the uh, acid peroxide mixture will, will work better on dissolving the base metals in there. So now I just need to top it off with the liquids. I'll fill it up halfway to the top of the fingers with the acid and then the other rest of the way up with the peroxide. And I'll show you that. There, I've got the liquid in. I filled it up just until everything is submerged. I'm not, you know, adding a lot of extra liquid in it. You don't need it. And already you can see a lot of bubbles coming up. The reactants are fresh, so it's going to start attacking the, uh, the base metals in there pretty quick. And now I'm going to turn on the bubbler. So that's going to keep agitation going. And now, I just need to put the lid on it.
and walk away for about a week. I'll check on it from time to time. There'll be some interesting changes in the in the liquid as the days go by. Um, the really vigorous reaction that's starting up right now, it will hit its peak in an hour or two and the liquid will get warm and there'll be lots of fizzing and it'll start turning green and then the reaction will die down as the peroxide gets used up. But it will keep going because I'm adding continuing to add extra oxygen to the liquid from the uh, bubbler here. So it won't entirely stop. just won't be as vigorous as in the beginning. But it will keep going and eventually all of the base metals in there will be dissolved and all of the gold foil that uh, will be left over from the plated on gold, it will just be little pieces of gold foil, will be liberated from those fingers and we can separate them out. So I'll show you um, as it goes. Okay, it hasn't even been quite an hour yet, maybe 45 minutes at the most. The liquid is quite warm, very warm. And look how green it's turned. You know, it's dark inside the fuel hood. I don't have the lights on, but uh, it's, it's darkening quickly. But by the time this process is complete, the liquid will be so such a dark green, it'll almost look black. And that's from the uh, copper and nickel salts that are being uh, developed as, the, as those metals are being dissolved away. Now, it hasn't been going on for very long. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing... Yes, there's some little bits of gold. There's some little bits of free gold floating around on the surface. So some of the gold has come loose already. So that's great. And this is just, like I said, about 45 minutes. But, you know, the reaction is really cooking along right now because the reactants are fresh. It's going to die down over the next few hours. And to get all that gold to come loose is going to take, you know, like I said, a week to ten days at the earliest, probably. Especially since it's getting cooler in the nights and uh, the reaction is slower when it's cooler. But uh, it's, it's cooking along nicely here in the beginning. I'll give you some more, uh, some more looks at it in the future. Well, it's the next day. The liquid is no longer warm, so the the really rapid uh, energetic uh, reaction that started out with is is died down. Um, the liquid has gotten a lot more opaque, very dark green, almost black, like I said it was going to be. But you can see there's still a lot of gold fingers on there. They haven't uh, come off yet. Some have, but most haven't. This is going to take, you know a week to ten days like I said so the the initial vigorous reaction has died down and now it's just gonna be slow but that's okay patience is the name of the game with this you know with you know I got, a, I got under two dollars worth of chemicals in there and if it takes you know a week ten days even two weeks I don't care because you gotta keep this cheap if you want to make any kind of profit on the gold I mean, you can use much more aggressive chemicals that are going to work faster, but it's going to be a lot more expensive. You know, slow and steady wins the race in this game. So we'll just let it sit. 